In a small Florida town, just 30 minutes north of the Gulf of Mexico, lies a secret place hidden deep within the woods. An abandoned cottage-style house, a relic of the early 1900s, sits in solitary confinement, whispering faint stories of its past, leaving us with only more questions than answers. How can a place that once held so much meaning and purpose be forgotten? How could the lives of generations past simply vanish into the mists of time, leaving no trace of their existence? These are the questions we seek to answer as we embark on a journey through this magical place, delving deep into its secrets and exploring the mysteries that it holds. And perhaps we can piece together some of the clues that are still left behind. So join me to experience the magic of this place. Let's breathe new life into its story and maybe rekindle the legacy of those who once called this place home. All right, so I just got to this house and we're walking up the driveway and already it looks absolutely amazing. Look at this. Look how these weeping willow trees with the Spanish moss look so magical. As we make our way up the overgrown path, the dense forest begins to thin and a sight of extraordinary magnitude greets us. Slowly but surely, the abandoned cottage begins to materialize before our very eyes, standing still like a tomb in an overgrown grave. A little house hidden back there, kind of framed around all these magnolia trees and this little white picket fence surrounding the house. And before we go inside, I wanna show you around back. There's a river right here, right behind the house. So back in the day, I imagine it wasn't so overgrown with trees. And you can get a direct view from the back window of the house here to this river. And it makes me wonder if this long looking driveway here that we're walking on wasn't some type of access to a dock that used to be here at one point. And maybe it was taken out by a hurricane Check this out. What a dreamy little piece of property. Treasure comes in many forms, and before us now stands a prime example. This flowing river is a striking juxtaposition to the stillness of the abandoned house. I can't help but wonder how many generations have just looked out from this stunning view, casting their lines into the water from the riverbank, or just simply watch the sun set over the river. It's a sight that hits me with a sense of nostalgia and wonder, for in this very spot, countless memories were made and a way of life was forged. And this is going into the backyard here. Look how this branch just hangs so low, almost touching the fence. These trees are amazing. So, they're like mystical looking. With this little awning here. Little picnic tables. They could walk out their back door from the house and have lunch out here overlooking the river. You can see how the house is already falling apart. I wonder what's in this little storage shed looking thing here. Look at all these little animal holes that have been dug out. Probably armadillo, I would imagine. And judging from how full this little storage shed looks, I imagine the house is gonna be full of stuff too. And little clues like a riding lawnmower still stored underneath the porch here shows that more than likely there's gonna be stuff all in the house. Look at this Spanish moss just growing on everything. Even the, the gate. This is coming around back to the front. I'm gonna see if we can enter the house this way. And 
And look at how her garden has ever grown. And these rose bushes are probably like eight feet tall with rosebuds still on them. And these beautiful flowers here. And check out how all these roses are all on the ground here. You can hardly even see the house past uh, all these flower bushes. And it looks like there's an open door. That's a good sign. Let's see what's inside, shall we? As we step inside, a quiet descends upon us, so palpable it seems to take on a life of its own. It's so quiet in here. Look at this. As soon as we walk in, we're already met with a whole shell collection and all of her books and some photos and memories. I imagine these are more photos here. Yeah, photos maybe of her grandchildren or her children. More photos here of different eras of her life. This looks to be possibly maybe her and her husband. Maybe here, her and her son. at her son's graduation. Definitely some antiques in here and some mid-century furniture. And here we have a dining room. I can't help but notice the delicate touches of femininity throughout the house so far. The floral accents, the porcelain figurines when we walked in the door, and the laced doilies in this room all seem to suggest that the last person to inhabit this place was an old woman. Who was she? What were her joys and sorrows, her hopes and dreams? What was it like for her to grow old in this quiet place, surrounded by memories of the past? So it looks like all the um, ch all the china has been cleared out of this particular cabinet. Maybe after she passed away, the family came and got what they wanted. Here's another cabinet here. A little bit of glassware still left inside. A little bit of champagne. Never opened. Some table linens. Candles. Definitely all supplies for the dining room. These wooden decorative bowls. Look like they've never been used. And perhaps this is where some silverware is. Let's see if we can get this thing open. Now this is all table linens. much glassware is still out. We have a shotgun shell and a bunch of 22 caliber bullets. We 
We might find a gun while we're in here, actually. It won't be the first time that's happened to me. I wonder what this little device is. If anyone knows what this is, let me know in the comments below. I've never seen one of these before. It's always interesting how I've learned so much about things in an abandoned house through the comment section on my videos. You guys teach me so much. I say we go into the kitchen. Look at this green, like 70s looking floor here. And these little chairs, they look like um, chairs for children. These are tiny. And this 70s looking wallpaper with a pretty modern Keurig machine. And look at this. There's little stories in these items on the wall and the writings on them. It's things like this on the walls that really tell a story about who this person was and gives clues about her life and who she was and what she enjoyed doing and doing for other people. It looks like some personal papers in there and I don't want to go through it for, uh, for privacy reasons. And look at this, these little these little espresso cups hanging. It looks like all the drawers are, are still full. And check out this cabinet here on the wall. Walking in, it almost looks like the wall, which I mean, I guess technically it is, but check out all this storage. Look at this. I bet every cabinet over here is completely full with glassware in China. Wow. Check this out, guys. It's completely full. And all this glassware is still left behind. Oh my God, look at this. All these little teacups hanging up on the back there. Matching plates and bowls to go with them. And look at this. Still jars of preserves that she made. It looks like molasses in here. We have, oh wow, more preserves. Look at this. Wild grape and white. That's wild grape jelly. That's wild grape jam. Wow, all of her cookbooks. Check this out. Again, this says a lot about what she valued and what she spent her time doing. I bet she was a really good cook. All of her cleaning supplies. It's a very organized kitchen. Which probably also says that she was a good cook. It's very organized. She meant business when it came to this kitchen. And as always, we have to check the refrigerator. Oh my God, look at this. Ugh, it's disgusting. Look at that. That looks like there's cake in there. Oh, this is a good one. Yikes. This is one of the grossest refrigerators that I've seen in a while. Almost as bad as the funeral home video. I 
a jar of matches. This is really cool. A little sunroom slash living room. And a little phone here. That's a mosquito candle. I smell it from here. First aid kit. And look how the, the ceiling is just completely falling in on this place. And there's all this black mold growing. So I'm trying not to stir too much dust up when I walk through this room. It's a neat looking globe. So I imagine this is probably where she spent a lot of her time sitting and watching TV. And then she had access to the backyard and the canopy over there to maybe have lunch in the afternoon. So I would walk through that doorway back there, but I feel like judging from the ceiling, the floor might also be pretty unstable. So bet you there's a way around. Check this bedroom out, this red carpet. Now, this is a big bed. This is Gotta be like a California king size bed. There's a doll here. No, oh, buried underneath curtains. That's not creepy or anything. Very dapper looking man. Let me check this out. Photo of some soldiers. It looks like it was around the Korean War era. These are all military police. I bet you one of these men is the old man that used to live here. Luckily their social security numbers have been erased. Check out these drawings here. Wonder if they were the children. That one's dated 1972. And that was 72 as well. So it looks like they had a girl and a boy probably around the same age. Dresser. Looks like, yeah. But you can tell this this lady used to have a ton of family photos hanging up all around her house. Love the color of this bathroom. And this is cool. It's not a clawfoot tub, but it's a tub on the floor. It's 
still full of towels and wash rags. And I love this antique piece right here. This old vanity. There's so much moisture in this house that it's warped all the wood, so it's gonna be difficult to open a lot of the drawers that are in here. So this looks like it was probably a teenager's room at some point. It just looks like young art, you know what I mean? Very 70s and 80s looking. I love this light picture that's hanging down. Very mid-century, kind of like atomic era. So here we have another bedroom with green carpet this time. The bed's completely made. This one's in immaculate condition. Check this out. All these very old photos of family. It's crazy to think that all of the people in these photos have probably passed these were all lives that are no longer. So these are all different various measurements and templates for making dresses and gowns. I've seen these before. So now we're starting to see evidence that this lady was a seamstress. Yeah, and this is a different, this is different um, polyester material and more templates for making these various outfits. out. This is a record book. Let's lay it here on this table. Let's see what kind of record she listened to. This says a lot about a person as well. Serenade of the Bells. So this is a blues record. Frankie Carl. Hank Williams. Oh my god. More Hank Williams, more Frankie Carl, Merle Travis, more country music, more Frankie Carl. So she really liked Frankie Carl. And I bet some of these records are probably worth some money. <laughs> it's a shame it's just left behind in this, in this house. Another vanity here with her perfume still out. Photos, perhaps of her son. Yeah, um, there's various there's various sewing supplies in all these drawers. So her sewing machine's got to be close, unless uh, one of her kids got that out before she or after she passed away. Perhaps maybe it was willed to one of the kids. Quite a book collection. And check out this swag lamp that hangs over the bed. This is so cool. The bed perfectly made. And the quilt matches the swag lamp pretty well. There's something different about this room. 
It's apparent to me that it's been carefully arranged with attention to detail. Everything seems to be in its right place, as if it's been meticulously prepared to welcome guests with open arms. And perhaps in quieter moments, the room was transformed into a sanctuary, a space where she can indulge in her passion for sewing and crafting. But what I now wonder, if this isn't her bedroom, then where could it be? It's just so quiet in this house. I feel like this place used to be so full of love and life, and now it's just quiet. And all of this looks like materials for sewing, stuff for making quilts and blankets, maybe dresses, curtains, tablecloths. See what's in here. And now we're getting back to the section of the house with water damage, but now we're on the other side of it. It's a cool looking lamp. There's a dresser in here and a bed here against the wall. So imagine this was a bedroom. Very small one, but a bedroom nonetheless. And look at all this water damage that's on the floor. And see, check it out. This is the other side of the water damage that we were just at a second ago. So this looks like this could be more of her sewing storage. I see a bunch of string over there. It's a cool little vase. Check it out, more of her sewing supplies here. Like a junk drawer. Every house has a junk drawer. Everyone's does. So does mine. I have several. Let's see about this fridge. Nope, this one's completely cleaned out. I've seen a lot of religious stuff in here. She was definitely a Christian. It looks like a brand new fire extinguisher back there. Looks like um, like tool storage back here. Basically a big walk-in closet full of different supplies for cleaning. And fixing. even a computer down there. Keyboard. And this doesn't look old at all. <laughs> this can't be very old. Yeah, I don't think this house has been abandoned very long. I'm seeing uh, quite a bit of stuff that looks fairly modern. Like that hedge trimmer box that we just saw and the Keurig machine. Wow, I didn't notice that. Chandelier up top. That's really cool looking. God, this water damage is bad. That's all black mold up above. That's why I'm trying to walk slowly and not brush up against these walls. I don't want to disrupt those uh, mold spores. It's like a laundry room in here. Washer and dryer has definitely been taken out. Just got a bunch of linen storage in here. I'm 
imagine this is where the yep this is where the laundry detergent different bathroom supplies are stored I got all these little cracks in the paint here from all the moisture and the expanding and contracting wow look at this bathroom with a with this carpet Wow, this bathroom is in immaculate condition. It almost looks as though someone still lives here. This is incredible. It's crazy how some parts of the house look pretty dilapidated and then you walk around the corner and other parts of the house, you almost can't even tell that it's abandoned. It's really common in a lot of these abandoned places. Try to open that and break something. So I imagine this was the old lady's bathroom that she would use because it has this little handle in here. It looks like it was to help her get up and out of the of the tub and also get up from the toilet. really cool that there's wallpaper inside the closet. It's funny, someone took the time to do that. <laughs> All right, let's see what's in this room. Down the hall here. Look at this old carpet leading into this bedroom. Oh, and before we go into the bedroom, there's a tiny closet here, right in the hallway. Yes, and check it out. This looks like it was all of her clothes. And all of her jackets and coats are still in here. This is all left behind. It's a very tight squeeze in this hallway. And here is the bedroom. I believe she stayed. It's so ominous in here. There's a TV she watched while she laid in bed. And this drawer looks like it's completely full of her things. And again, it's pretty waterlogged. You can see how the moisture is just pulling this right off of it. I don't know if we'll really be able to open some of these. Yeah, see, it's, it's completely stuck. Look at all these bows and wrapping paper. So uh, perhaps she loved to give gifts. Maybe that's something that we've learned about her as well. Because that's an excessive amount of bows. And this is an excessive amount of wrapping paper here in the corner. Maybe she was a very giving lady as well as a lady who loved to cook for others. Standing here in this room, the essence of her life surrounds me. Every object in the room seems to speak about her. Though this part of the house hasn't been visited in years, there in the corner, the gift wrappings, so lovingly preserved, give a glimpse into a life well lived. I hope she lived a life full of love and her generosity was returned to her in kind. I hope she was surrounded by her loved ones when her time came and that her legacy lives on in the memories of those who knew her. All right, that pretty much wraps up this exploration. And I wanna thank you guys so much for coming along with me on this adventure. If you haven't already yet, subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Like, comment, let me know what you thought of this video below. And until next time, stay off the beaten path.